Hi, it's Pamela. In this tutorial, we're going to go over using Doodly to foster engagement in Facebook groups. Hey, and welcome to the official Doodly YouTube channel. If you enjoy our content, please click the like and subscribe button below. Now let's get straight to the video. A Facebook group is a public or private online community created around a common interest, cause, topic, or business. In order to be successful in your group, you're going to want to create value, provide answers, and be engaging. For example, you could use videos to celebrate a group milestone, such as when you get 10,000 members. You could also use it to express gratitude or appreciation for group members, or announce an incentive or contest. A key way to extend out into your community is through the use of animated doodly whiteboard videos that encapsulate your expertise in an engaging way. Whiteboard videos are a great way for engagement because they allow the viewer to see what's going on as well as read some important points being made. Not only can they enjoy the video at any time, group members can watch it directly from their news feed without having to leave Facebook. One of the best ways to create value with Doodly is by answering questions. For example, if your group is helping foster families of children with behavioral problems, you might see questions like, what do I do when my foster child has an outburst? You answer that question by creating a video explaining a strategy that the foster parents can use to manage the situation. So let's go ahead and answer that question with a Doodly video. Now, as we're creating the video, we wanna make sure it's relevant. We want to organize our thoughts and write a script for it. And then we want to make sure to keep the video short and focused. Nobody's going to want to watch a dissertation. They just want an answer to their question. So let's go ahead and start from scratch. You're going to click create new video and you're going to choose a style for it. So you could choose any of these above. Let's do a glass board. We haven't done one of those in a while and we're going to give it a title. So in, my, in this case, we'll just title it the name of the question. So. Let's choose a resolution. Since we're doing it on Facebook, we could choose this Facebook and Instagram style. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna turn it into a 1000 by 1000 square. And square videos are great for Facebook because they fill the screen a little bit better on mobile devices. So now we have this square and it's a glass board, which means the hand will be facing us like it's drawing it on a piece of glass. So here's my script. I've got the question and then I've got some advice for them. I've got one, two, three bullet points. And then I end up with a question. So I'm prompting them to enter some strategies in the comments section below. And this is going to foster some engagement. I'm giving my great advice and I know that there are more strategies than these three, right? So I'm hoping the other group members will contribute. And what will end up happening is I'll have this thread with this video that's getting people thinking and contributing and engaging. So let's go ahead and create a scene here. Click the plus button. And we want to choose a font. Let's use one that's going to be fairly prominent. You click the word wrap button. Adds a little bit of flexibility in case your text is super long. And then I want it centered. So. And now we need an image of a child. And I don't know that we're going to have many of them throwing a tantrum, but we'll see. And we do, and we have one that looks like he's fussy, so that's good. Let's start with him. And then maybe we have a mom in the background looking worried. So I'm gonna type in worried. Here we go, she looks like she has a headache, so we'll use her. And if you click this button, you can flip her. And then if we want some color, click the gear icon. And you can choose a different color. And I think red would be good because it represents anger. So that looks great. That's our opening screen. Find out what triggers or causes the behavior. So we're gonna click the plus sign and we're gonna use that same font. And again, I can take that red, make that our theme color here. So now we're gonna go to the props tab and we're gonna look for a television. TV is pretty good, okay. Let's go back to our scene and we can use the TV as a screen for more information. So that's a great idea, right? So let's make it nice and big. So let's get some text and now we'll use a different one because it's not the title text. So we could use something different. And I'm gonna put the break on the word or. 
So do something else or set an earlier cutoff time. And then once again, let's find the baby. We're gonna make a note of our mom's name is Amanda, okay? So we can use her later. So now we want child. Now, I'm kind of having a problem with, I've got a baby here and then I've got a kid here. And I just don't have that many choices on babies. So I'm gonna change this to a kid. I think we're gonna use Anne as our kid. So we could make this look like an outburst. So let's go back. And we're gonna replace the baby with this child. And you just drag over and then you choose yes, replace. And now we can have a different activity going on of her reading instead of watching TV. Okay, so that's our second scene. Now let's look at timing here. We want find out what triggers the behavior to be first and then we want the TV to come on. We don't need it to be three seconds long, so I'm gonna change it over here to maybe one second long, so the handle draw it for one second. And then we do want the advice to come on. And let's put the girl first, she's there. Let's make that about two seconds long. And then the mom, finally relaxing, and she'll be about two seconds long. So let's find our next topic. And then we want Amanda. And then of course we need our child, which was Anne. And here she is being sassy, but mom is being nice and calm. Now here, let's go ahead and use a little speech bubble to indicate her asking a question. So I'm just gonna search for speech. And it's fine to cover this existing text because remember the scene is going to build. So we'll have it linger long enough so that they already are done with the whole reading of the find out what they're upset about. So I think that would actually look kind of cool. And then let's use an arrow pointing down just to really reinforce that we want them to take some action. Now you can sometimes change the color of the props as well. So I want to go back to the red for this arrow. Okay, so our final scene looks good. So we can go ahead and start working on the voiceover. And I'm going to do it one scene at a time. So if you go down here to the microphone, you'll see this little plus sign. And that's your microphone for your voiceover. And once you hit this red button, it's gonna start recording. So here I go. I'm gonna have a couple seconds where it's gonna be this, my little dummy placeholder scene here. What do I do when my foster child has an outburst? You could try a number of things. A few are quick and simple. Others will take more time and resources. Okay, so as you see, I need to lengthen this scene here so that it extends a few more seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this script because I no longer need it. And this is gonna give me a better idea of how long exactly I need this to be. Now, if I hold my cursor over, I get a double arrow and I can just eliminate these gaps and I like to do that because then it just gives me more control over where I place this. So I'm sliding it over to the beginning. And now I know I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight seconds added to this scene. So I need to decide how I want to add those eight seconds. So I might want to add a little bit of a pause between some of this maybe like half a second before the kid comes on, and then maybe another second before mom comes on. And then I need a few seconds at the end. So I'm gonna to go to scene settings, and right here, extra time at the end. Let's add, let's try five seconds. 
and see where that puts us. And that's a little bit too long, so we'll try three and a half seconds. And that's just right. So if we want, we can preview what we have so far. I like to right click and click preview. What do I do when my foster child has an outburst? You could try a number of things. A few are quick and simple. Others will take more time and resources. And that's fine. Now, I heard myself clicking that button and you'll see if you look down here, there's that little sound wave, that was the little button click. So I'm going to just go ahead and cover that up. And now we won't hear that anymore. And then I said we were going to add a camera move since it's such a long scene and we have 10 seconds of it just being static. I think it'd be good. We'll just zoom in on this girl. So to do that, we need to scroll back over until we can reach this plus sign here over here on this panning and zooming tool. So plus, and this is our effects button. And we're gonna slide it all the way over to the point in time where we want it to move the camera. So I'm gonna double click it and you have the start and end positions. So right now it's kind of zoomed in. So I want it to be full screen at the beginning. And then at the end is when I want it to zoom in on our kid. And let's have it zoom in where she's just saying, I'm hungry, like that. And then we can stretch out this. First, let's look at it in its default view. And when I'm working with the camera, I like to go over here to show preview and look at this other preview window because it gives us better control. For example, see the playhead down here, this blue, Playhead, I can position it exactly. So we're at full screen here, and then it zooms in right after the hand writes, I'm hungry. Well, I'm thinking we want it to zoom in right as the hand is writing, I'm hungry. So right here is where I want the camera to zoom. So all I have to do is move my camera to that position. So now, Let's hit play. The behavior. Are they hungry? Are they tired? Do they need a break from whatever it is you're doing? Playtime, for example. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to add a zoom out after a while here, too. So I'm going to zoom back out to full screen. So I'm going to leave the start position as is, and then I'm going to end it full screen. So my scene is going to be full screen, then it's going to zoom in, and then it's going to zoom back out. So let's take a look. The behavior. Are they hungry? Are they tired? Do they need a break from whatever it is you're doing? Playtime, for example? Sometimes all your foster child needs is a little bit of space and quiet time to work through their emotions. And that looks just great. Okay. And then finally, if we want to add some music, we can do that. Go over to the Musics tab, the Sounds tab. And then if you click Categories, Music, then all you see is music. I'm going to use Continuum. And I'm going to go to the beginning of my video, because I want it to start at the beginning. And I'm going to drag it into the music row. Now this music is going to be blaring loud. So I'm going to click the speaker icon, and I'm going to turn it way down so that it doesn't drown out my audio. So 8% might do the trick. Now before we listen to it, I need to have it end properly. So it's too long. And in this case, I think I'd rather have the natural fade out. So I need to shorten it by about seven or eight seconds on this side. So I'm going to go like this. And then I'm going to move it down. And that's going to end perfectly for my video. So now I'm going to right click at the very beginning of this and I'm going to fade in. Make it a long fade. And we're ready to take a look at this. 
What do I do when my foster child has an outburst? You could try a number of things. A few are quick and simple. Others will take more time and resources. Find out what triggers or causes the behaviors you want to nip in the bud. For example, is it TV time? If so, do something else when it's time for them to watch or set an earlier cutoff time for TV. Remain calm at all times if possible. You don't want your foster child to feel as though they have power over you because this can lead to aggression and power struggles. Find out what they're upset about. In other words, explore the root of the behavior. Are they hungry? Are they tired? Do they need a break from whatever it is you're doing? Playtime, for example. Sometimes all your foster child needs is a little bit of space and quiet time to work through their emotions. What has worked for you? Share your strategies in the comments section below. And there you have it. That's the basics of creating a video to foster engagement in your Facebook groups. Thanks for watching.